This presentation is titled Platelet Counts in PRP, Does It Matter? My name is Dom Buford. I'm an orthopedic surgeon based in Dallas, Texas. I'm the founder of Texas Orthobiologics, which is a combination orthopedic surgery and regenerative medicine clinic. And this presentation was first given at the ANA 24 meeting in Boston. This was also given in association with the Biologic Association session at that meeting. My disclosures are up to date on the AAOS website. The handout for this presentation can be found at the QR code or on any browser you can type in buford.info forward slash AANA 24 PRP. So once again, that's buford.info forward slash ANA 24 PRP. So where do we need better PRP dosing data? Really everywhere. But for the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to focus on two areas of the body, the rotator cuff and the knee. So let's start with talking about the shoulder and rotator cuff tears and rotator cuff tendinopathy. One of the main things we can now say pretty conclusively is that if we use PRP in association with rotator cuff repair surgery, that we can count on reduced re-tear rates. Now, whether it's a reduced re-tear rate or improved healing rate uh, is, is debatable, but the bottom line is long-term re-tear rates are decreased in patients that have their rotator cuff repairs augmented with a PRP injection. Now, dosing is critical, but we do have meta-analyses of 18 level one studies as given on this slide that support this conclusion. What about soft tissue pathology in general? Well, something very interesting happens if you truly dig into each article and look at the dosing that is reported. The authors on this paper, of which I was one of them, but by far not the smartest guy in that room. There's some great clinicians and great researchers uh, that, that helped in this article. What we found was that if you have less than about three and a half billion platelets in your single injection treatment for tendinopathy or other soft tissue pathology, those studies were the ones that showed that it did not help clinically. However, if your single injection dose is 3.5 billion platelets or above, look at that. It's a nine out of 11 studies showed positive outcomes. 14 out of 14 of the studies under a dose of 3.5 billion showed no help. Nine out of 11 with doses above three and a half billion showed positive outcomes. So what does that mean? I think the conclusion is obvious. Get your dose above three and a half billion platelets in a single injection if you want to have a positive outcome. Now, what if you go even higher than three and a half billion? Do we have any studies that have looked at that? And the answer is yes. Here's a nice paper that was published in 2021 in uh, the Journal of Arthroscopy. This was a level two prospective study specifically looking at rotator cuff tendinopathy or partial tears. Uh, these are patients that come in with diagnoses like bursitis, rotator cuff tendinopathy, partial tears in the rotator cuff. Patients enrolled in this study had all failed prior uh, non-operative and, and prior conservative measures. What's nice about this study is the authors gave us their dosing information. This was a single injection of 5 billion platelets. So even uh, well above the three and a half billion threshold we just talked about, with this single dose of 5 billion platelets, their results were fantastic. 94% of their patients showed improvements in VAS, American shoulder and elbow, and constant scores by six months. 84% of the patients returned to sports at the same level within three months. Only 7% of the patients in their study required a second injection. So this is pretty compelling evidence that if you go even higher than that three and a half billion threshold, we might even be able to do a better job clinically for our patients. So now given uh, the, the data that we're accumulating, we can have the beginnings of a soft tissue dose response curve for PRP. We just talked about a study that looked at a dose of 5 billion, and I think that result was excellent. Uh, we know that above three and a half billion, we're getting positive outcomes. And we know that below three and a half billion, we're getting uh, no help with our outcomes. And so this is what our uh, roughly drawn dose response curve looks like at the moment. We still need to further define the right side of that curve and see what happens at doses maybe of 7 billion or 10 billion for soft tissue pathology. The video that you see there is me injecting my own Achilles tear. I had about a 25% tear that was symptomatic for a year. I hobbled on it, tried to play tennis on it, and it finally was shutting me down. So with the help of, of my nurse who tried her best to talk me out of it, I injected my Achilles with 5 billion 
uh, platelets and a single injection. Um, and, and three months later, I was better. Now, the, the take-home message from this is actually don't do this to yourself. Find a, find a skilled and trained clinician that you trust. I, I would not recommend doing this to yourself. Let's change a little bit and look at knee osteoarthritis. So the first study looking at uh, PRP dosing for knee osteoarthritis is this one here that was published in 2021. The lead author was Himanshu Bansal. This was a level one study. It was well-powered. He documents his protocol beautifully so we know exactly what happened and what he did. This was a 60 cc blood draw. The PRP dose, which we can obtain by multiplying the platelet count of 1250 by the volume of PRP, which was eight, you multiply those two together and you get 10 billion in a single injection. What he found was fantastic. The PRP group had improved WOMAC, functional outcome scores, improved pain scores, and their walking distance improved. The improvements were still significant and above MCID one year after this single injection. The MRI scans, however, did not show a change in cartilage uh, loss or for that matter, in, in, in increased cartilage volume for either treatment group. So this single injection treatment did not document any significant change in cartilage uh, outcomes one year later. I would say that when this was first published, I, I switched in my clinic to this protocol and in our registry data now, that's been several years, we are getting an average of 18 months of statistically significant improvement over baseline scores by doing this single injection 10 billion dose protocol. This paper is, is very interesting for a lot of reasons. It was published in 2022. The lead author was Jay Chu. This was a very large study. There were over 300 patients in two groups. This was another level one study, a very similar blood draw volume of 50 cc's. Platelet dose is a little bit different though. Look at this with me. 832 platelet count times five cc's of PRP gives you a platelet dose of 4.2 billion. And then the other distinction in this uh, author's paper is this was a three injection protocol. So these patients got an injection weekly for three weeks. His outcomes were fantastic. PRP improvements were still present four years after this protocol. And now we have a disease modifying protocol because he showed by MRI scan 50% less cartilage loss in the medial compartment of these patients' knees at five years by quantified MRI scan. So truly, this was a disease modifying intervention. And this study was just recently released within the past uh, a couple weeks. This is another level one study. Uh, these authors had, a, again, a well-powered study with 40 patients in three groups. Their three intervention groups were a single injection group, a three injection group, and a five injection group. And they compared to see which protocol would be better. The platelet dose was illustrated and quantified. It was a 929 platelet count on average and four cc's of PRP. That made each injection dose 3.7 billion platelets. From their data, we can surmise that their platelet recovery percentage was 87%, which is on the high end. That's a very high and, and very good platelet recovery percentage. So uh, we'll come back to that subject in a minute. But their outcome measures were fantastic. What they found was that there is no benefit going to five injections from three injections. So three injections equaled five injections in terms of clinical outcome. Three injections was significantly better than one injection. So given the same dose, three injections seem to be better than one injection and the outcomes from this, this well-done clinical trial. The trial that I still wanna see is a single high-dose injection, call it 10 billion platelets, versus three injections at either a high dose or a low dose. So I wanna have a single injection that's a high dose compared to a multi-injection protocol. And I, there's people working on that. We should have that data hopefully within the year. This was yet another study published this year already. There's, as you can see, the, the volume of clinical uh, uh, outcomes uh, publications is, is, is rapidly increasing, which is fantastic. In this study, we look at a protocol that's just comparing two doses. It's another level one study. This is um, early to, to moderate arthritis. This is a single injection protocol. One group got 2.8 billion platelets. The other group got 5.65 billion platelets. And as you would imagine by now, the higher dose group had better clinical outcomes. And in the author's own words, 
the overall trends and results significantly better in group B than group A. Group B was the high dose group. So here is the beginnings of a dose response curve looking at PRP for knee osteoarthritis. Dr. Bonsall's study at the 10 billion uh, dose uh, single injection gave excellent results for a year or in, in my registry data, 18 months even. However, Dr. Chu's paper with three weekly injections at 4.2 billion platelets showed a disease modifying effect with 50% less cartilage loss five years after the, after the procedure. So maybe that's the best that we have in the literature right now. Two tips to get to 5 billion platelets, because I think that's a number that is, is very easy and comfortable to achieve in clinic. Uh, the first tip is to always draw at least 60 cc's of blood. Now, why do I say that? I say that because if we assume that our patients have a low normal platelet count of 200 and we draw 60 cc's of blood, we are starting with 12 billion platelets. If our patients have a platelet count in the 300s or 400s, it's easy street. That's not a problem at all. But to, to, to be safe, we assume that they're at the low end of normal. So we start with 12 billion platelets. And now step two is to make sure that we have fact checked our PRP kit and we know that the platelet recovery percentage is at least 50%. If it is, and we start with 12 billion, our PRP is going to have 6 billion, and that puts us above the 5 billion threshold, where I think we can, we can expect the best possible outcomes at this point based on the literature. So it's important to know your platelet recovery percentage and your PRP kit. If you don't have the ability um, to, to, to run the hematology analysis on your PRP doses, there are companies where you can send in PRP, and they will tell you what your PRP uh, uh, quantification numbers are. Uh, but I think it's important to at least do that, take advantage of those services, or in the literature, in publications, there are multiple authors that have published lists of platelet recovery percentages for different commercially available kits. And so a lot of this information is already known. And all you have to do is, is ask around or, or find a mentor or join one of the many LinkedIn groups or organizations uh, like Interventional Orthobiologics Foundation, and you can get that information very, very easily. I would like to propose a new PRP metric to evaluate kit efficiency and cost. And I simply call it the cost per billion platelets. And the reason why I think this is important is because wading through some of the marketing is, is sometimes difficult. And as consumers, not as doctors, but as consumers, we're often trained to look at the price only. So if we're approached with two different kits and one kit costs $150, like in example two, and the other kit costs $225, like in example one, we may just make our decision based on that cost. But we have to look under the hood, if you will. In example two, that kit protocol is only a 16 cc blood draw. Remember I said we ought to draw 60 to be safe. Example one, that kit does draw 60 cc's. And here's where things can really separate themselves in terms of which kit is better than the other. If example one has an 80% platelet recovery and a higher blood draw, its platelet dose that it can produce is going to be significantly better than a kit that only draws 16 cc's and has a 25% platelet recovery percentage, which is there's several kits that, that are like example two. When you look at those two different platelet doses, one will give you a $23 per billion platelet uh, cost. Example two, the actual cost per billion platelets is $120. So now if somebody approaches you and says, I have this kit where it's $23 per billion platelets, or I have this kit where it's $120 per billion platelets, I think that gives us a chance to really compare these kits on a, a more apples to apples comparison basis. There's still some other issues that we may wanna make a decision based on, but I think that's a much truer representation of how efficient a kit is. The cheaper kit here in example two is actually five times more expensive if you look at it on a cost per billion platelet metric. So thank you for your attention. I hope this gives you some practical, clinically relevant uh, tips and pearls, and I can be found at these social media outlets at any time. Best wishes.